All right, I'm going to do a video on Taylor series because somebody asked for it. Um, it's not examinable in EngMaths 1B. This is purely for um, people's interest in education. A Taylor series um, is a means of um, essentially approximating a function, um, but it can actually be better than approximation. And in some cases, the Taylor series can be exactly equal to a function. So it doesn't matter how many dimensions we have. We have multivariate, univariate. Um, we can always construct Taylor series um, of uh, functions, provided that they're uh, differentiable uh, around a point. So the idea is that you have some function We'll just treat the univariate case, of course. You have some function like this. And at this point, say x naught, we wish to approximate the function and approximate the function in the neighborhood. Right? So neighborhood is like a, a little blob. We know f. f is known x naught is also known. The problem is that f might not be um, well specified, for example. You might know what it is, sine, sine of theta, cos of theta, or sine x, cos x, whatever. Right? You do have to know its functional form, and it has to be differentiable. at least in a neighborhood, if not everywhere. At x0, you can evaluate the derivative, and therefore you can construct a tangent line, which has the same first derivative at x0 as the function. That's good. It provides an approximation local to the point. Further away, however, the approximation is poor. So what we can do is not only can we make the first derivatives agree at this point, but we can make the second derivatives agree as well. By making the second degree the second derivatives agree, we end up with a quadratic polynomial um, approximation, which is a bit better. Um, I should draw something a bit better um, than that. Right. You end up with something like that, a better approximation to your function. Then you might try a cubic. And you might get something like that, where your third derivatives also agree. Then you can make the fourth derivatives agree, the fifth derivatives, and so on. You can just keep making more and more derivatives um, agree, and you can get better approximations. What you end up with is uh, approximate. I'll still write an approximation. Um, you end up with something term 0, term 1, plus term 2, plus dot, dot, dot. Right? These are all um, functions of x of some form. And this can be infinite. So an infinite sum is called a series, if you like. Um, there's a few more conditions on them than that. but. Uh, So if you've got the infinite, an infinite number of terms here, you've got a series. If you've got some finite number of terms, you've got what's called a Taylor polynomial. Okay, the terms. These are all deduced by making the order. 
of the derivatives or making the making the derivatives of certain order match the derivatives match to some order. Okay, so t0 matches the zero derivative, i.e. you make the function values equal. Then you make the, sec the first derivatives equal, that gives you a tangent line. Then you make the second derivatives equal, that gives you a parabola. Then you get a cubic, a quartic, a quintic, and so on. Right? There's a formula for this. You don't have to work out what these are every single time you do it. There is a formula. And I'll still write this as um, the Taylor polynomial approximation to f of x at x naught is, right, so you've always got this point x naught that you care about, that stuff's happening, right, so the Taylor polynomial approximation to f is, this is the formula, f of x naught plus x times f dash, the first derivative of x, of f at x naught, oops, that's, sorry, I made a mistake, x minus x naught plus x minus x naught over 2, f double dash, x naught plus x minus, oops, that should be squared, x naught cubed, over 3 factorial, f triple dash, x naught, etc. Right, so you can keep going um, with this polynomial up to some finite number of terms. Right, so uh, plus x minus x naught to the power of n over n factorial. This is the nth derivative there. Right? The key point is um, that a, po a polynomial approximation has a finite number of terms. The Taylor series has an infinite number of terms, and we shall use sigma notation, right, for some not summation notation, to write this down. So, you've got the nth derivative, x naught minus x naught to the power of n over n factorial. That's the Taylor series. And note that I've written equality, right? So assuming convergence everywhere. That's a pretty big assumption, by the way. Right, we're restricting our attention to what are called analytic functions. Um, things like sine, cosine, uh, exponential. Um, convergence means that this sum um, tends to some finite limit. Even though you keep adding an infinite number of terms, you'll get to this summation has some finite limit upon it. Right? Not every summation has to converge.
um, this is the nth derivative. Zero factorial equals one, right? This can obviously start at zero. Um, if you've got the zeroth derivative, that's just the function, right? So f zero equals f, right? Um, and it's at this point x naught, right? This this point x naught is important. Okay, so that's the definition of the Taylor series. Um, we're now going to have a look at how the Taylor series works, right? So I'm going to illustrate um, adding more and more terms. So I've got MATLAB here. So we're going to run. Uh, oops. We're going to run um, the MATLAB code. So what I have here is a plot of sine, right? That's a sine of x in the dashed black lines. The red straight line is the first Taylor series, a first order po Taylor polynomial. Um, so a linear function. So the constant term plus this term here, right? The derivative matches at x naught equals zero, right? So you see that it's a good approximation near zero like that, um, but it gets bad out here. So the next step is to try a quadratic, um, a higher order approximation. So this is a higher order approximation. It happens to be a cubic. And you see that you're starting to get this curve, this, the curve right. So you get a better approximation up here and down here. You can take more terms again. So this is just making, this is considering more and more of these terms. N is getting bigger each time I plot this, um, this line here. This red line is a better Taylor series approximation every time. That's another approximation again. And you see it's really good. It's a tiny discrepancy there. Um, um, but if you go a couple more terms, it's almost indistinguishable. Right, so that's the what's happening with the Taylor series approximation, right? So the next step is to do an example of how you actually calculate a Taylor series approximation. So let's consider the Taylor series of sine at x equals zero. So the example that I was just plotting. So e.g f of x equals sine x, x naught equals zero. These are the two ingredients you need for Taylor series. You can, of course, also specify the number of terms that you're going to calculate, right? Um, but I'm not going to do that in this case. I'm just going to do a few until I get bored. The first term is um, x minus 0 to the power of 0 over 0 factorial times sine of 0, right? That's obviously 0, right? Like it's not, it's not too difficult to see that that's going to be x to the power of x to the power of zero is one times sine zero sine zero zero right. zero factorial is one so this is a legitimate fraction right the next term x minus x naught which is zero to the power of one over one factorial the first derivative sine is cosine cosine zero plus the next term. All I'm doing is plugging into this formula and just expanding this summation symbol, right? Um, so this summation symbol means start at n equals zero, add n equals one, two, three, four, and keep going until infinity. So x minus zero squared two factorial. 
the second derivative of sine is minus sine. So I actually have a minus sign there. Sine zero. Right, it's still zero. Third term. The third derivative of sine is minus cosine. Right, so I'm just differentiate. You should notice that I'm just differentiating once the, the previous function here. So that's x minus zero cubed three factorial cos zero. Right. Getting pretty bored of this now, so this will be the last term that I do. Okay. This is zero. This simplifies obviously just to x. This one is zero. This one simplifies to x cubed. Um, x cubed over three factorial, which is six. So x, x cubed on six. This one is zero, sine of zero. So then the next one I've got is x to the power of, x to the power of five over five factorial. Five factorial is five times four, which is 20 times three, which is 60 times 2, which is 120, times 1. Okay. So that's the Taylor series of sine about the point x equals 0. Let's consider another one. And let's, instead of using 0, let's use x equals 1. The first, the 0th derivative of e is just the function itself, but it's now at uh, 1. So it's x minus 0, oh, x minus 1 to the power of 0 over 0 factorial, e to the, zero, e to the 1. Next one x minus 1 to the power of 1 over 1 factorial. First derivative of e is just e. And that's, again, evaluated at uh, x naught uh, equals 1. Um, actually, I should write x naught, shouldn't I? Should I write x naught? Yes, I did. That's consistent. Um, then the next one. That should be a one factorial e plus blah, 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 right? So what I've got here is e to the power of one plus e to the power of one x minus one plus e to the power of one on two factorial e to the power of one x minus one squared. So you see that this thing can be simplified to e to the 1 plus e to the 1 x minus e to the 1 plus um, 1 over 2 factorial is 2 times 1, uh, which is 2 e to the 1. E 
to the one x plus half. Okay. All right, and left in this form, this is clearly um, some sort of polynomial, right? Um, it just so happens that the um, the x term cancels out here in this case. All right, so that's a quick rundown of Taylor series and how to calculate how to calculate them in a couple of simple examples. Really, it's this. Um, it's this sort of formula, and you've always got that formula to come back to. It's just a computational idea. But what it lets you do is replace complicated functions like sine with much more simple polynomial approximations, right? And this is particularly useful um, when you don't, when you're um, when your function is awful, right? So if you've got some awful um, function that's, you know, wiggling all over the place, you can replace it with a simple polynomial that's a good approximation to that function around this neighborhood point. This idea here is the crucial physical idea of a Taylor series. You take a, co a complicated known differentiable function and you replace it by some local approximation that you can make as good as you like. Typically what we do is we replace the complicated function by a linear function. Linear functions are nice because then you can do linear things with them, right? Um, An addition holds in, in a normal way. So linear approximations such as you might see in um, um, circuit design where you've got amplifiers, an amplifier is an, has a non-linear voltage current response, um, and what you would do is around your operating um, voltage, um, you would use a linear approximation to that component um, so that you can make progress to determine what your circuit is up to. In terms of um, fluid flows, again, we often use Taylor series approximations to um, complicated um, fluid flows that you might see in, um, in aerodynamics and so on, or complicated dynamical systems. You often um, replace a complicated dynamical, nonlinear dynamical system with a, not, with a linear approximation around some point of interest 